Faye Doctor, right? Yeah, Faye Doctor. That's just a new name that I come to, um, I gain over the years. You're part of the Hoovers, right? Yeah, Five Deuce Hoover. Westside Five Deuce Hoover from that gang, Mississippi Swain, co-founder. Oh. Okay, okay. Oh, yeah, let's let's definitely jump into it. And speaking of Five Deuce, Five Deuce in L.A., I believe, are the only ones that still claim the Crip card, right? Correct, correct. Okay. Can you everybody, explain everybody, everybody out there kind of the history criminal. of the Crip versus criminal thing? What I understood, um, I know most Hoovers they went criminal, and um, for whatever reason, I think it was like in the 90s where they dropped the Crip name, and Five Deuce was the only ones that kept, you know, the C name. And, and what year did the uh, Hoover start in your city? We started like in 92, 1992. And you said you were co-founder? Yes, co-founder, yes. Okay. Did someone from LA, LA migrate there and kind of get it started? Or did you guys just pick up the name, you know, because you heard about it from LA? How did the whole history of the name survive? Sorry. No, no. We actually we actually had a homeboy. Let me tell you how it go. We got a homeboy, my homeboy, Big Chauncey. He, um, he actually is he's from a neighboring city from where we from. So we from a little small town called Bells only, Mississippi. It's in the Delta of Mississippi in the central part of Mississippi, in between like Greenville and Yazoo City. So um actually my homeboy Big Chauncey met my homeboy Ken G, who was the founder. My boy Ken Brown, my childhood homeboy, my brother, you know what I'm saying? He met him and that's where the connection came. And he already had started a crip hood over in this neighboring city, which is called Indianola. So when he met my homeboy, Kent, that was a chance for expansion. So we were just a neighboring city. You know, uh, it was like a wave that just come through because it was like, um, you heard like when the banging and Little Rock came out, when all that yeah. was hitting the air then, man, it was really going, that was like a wave that had come through the South from Texas, Mississippi, um, it was action down in New Orleans, everywhere, Clown up to St. Louis, everywhere. It was just jumping off. You know what I'm saying? We caught the wave of it. And um, like I say, being my childhood friend's best friend, he brought it back to me. You know what I'm saying? When he brought it back to me, we was already looking for something to be different anyway. You know, because when we grew up at, you know what I'm saying, getting from the West Coast, was that, you know, in the West Coast, they go against, you know, Crip against blood, Crip against Crip. We had a different playing field. We had a mix of the Midwest gangs as well. So we was amongst the, the Disciples, the Vice Lords, the Mickey Cobras, the Four Corner Hustlers. So, you know, we had to establish ourselves amongst people that sets that already been established. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah. What years were you most active? Oh, man. Around, um, who we? I say about mm, the first year or two, we was recruiting basically. I say around 94, 94, 95, man. I was very active, man. Mm -hmm. I was, I was yeah. very active, yeah, because I think 90, around 95, I had. I had got a shooting case, you know, at a night club, you know what I'm saying? There was an altercation that broke out, and I ended up shooting a guy, you know what I'm saying? Self, it was like self-defense type deal. I've never been that type of cat, you know what I'm saying, to start trouble, you know what I'm saying? You had to come my way, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to enforce it, you know? Mm. But um, yeah. no doubt about it, I mean, it was Crips for sure, you know what I'm saying? We did what Crips did, and, you know, we stood out, you know what I'm saying, once we... Once we made our mark, and people were like, wow, it's really Crips, you know, here. Because, you know, I remember we had friends that used to come down from the West Coast. I used to be, uh, my ex-wife, she, um, a lot of her family was from Compton and parts of Cali like that, you know. And um, I think it was somebody died in the family, and some of the family come down. And um, I think the story I heard was some of them sitting around the barbecue pit, and they happened to see a brick wall across the street. They had Crips sprayed up on the wall, and they laughed at it. I said, man, what do you country cats down here know about cripping? And my own big homegirl, Big Rue, you know, she's from Compton, you know, Palmer Block, Compton Crip. And she told him, no, it's Crip down here. Would you say that gangs started in Mississippi, 
specifically because of crack cocaine and the, the way that that was taking over America. You know, they're trying to get it cheaper. They're trying to, you know, sell it for more in certain areas. And that's uh, a lot of gangs started up because of that. Would you say that would be how your uh, it started in your state? Well, that's that, that goes hand in hand. You know what I'm saying? That's part of the trade. You know, most sets and gangs, you know, that's kind of like they backbone, they structure, they get out hustle. That's part of that come with the territory, you know. I think that played a role in a lot of, you know, stuff too, you know, drugs, money, sex, you know, all that, you know, that ties in with it, I would say. Do you guys have a big Mexican gang, uh, gang numbers down there? Yeah, I, I spotted, I spotted little tags here and there, you know what I'm saying? They low key, they low key, but I, I recognize their presence though. You know, a lot of people don't. Don't know how to recognize the writing on the wall sometimes. And I have just seen stuff, you know, and like, oh, that looks kind of familiar there. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, they present. They just low-key. A lot of them working, though, I think, though. They trying to do something different. You know what I'm saying? Like we uh, doing ourselves today, you know? You know? Yeah. Yeah, what I'm thinking is the parents move there, you know, obviously to work or to get, you know, a, a, a live a better life. But it's the kids that bring that culture from L.A., you know, 11, 12, 13 years old that are already from a gang and they bring it out there. So I think you guys are going to, within the next five or ten years, I really think you guys are going to see an explosion of, of Mexican gangs down there. Yeah, because I spot them here and there, though. Yeah, they're around. I, they're here, but they just kind of yeah. laying dormant, a lot of them, you know what I'm saying? Low key, you know what I'm saying? Because I can see it like, even here, like where I'm at now in Arkansas, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? This is like a little baby Los Angeles out here. You know what I'm saying? I'm in Jacksonville, which is outside of Little Rock. You know what I'm saying? And, I, and I'm cool with a lot of cats out here, too, that's affiliated. You know, I know a lot of cats affiliated from Mississippi to Texas or everywhere I've been, man. You know what I'm saying? I've just been loved and respected. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I ain't, so, on, the, I ain't on the set trip tip. You know what I'm saying? Never really been on that, though. And that's another thing I meant to tell you. You know, uh, um, us coming up as Crips in Mississippi... That was one thing that we didn't do. You know, like, it tripped us out when we come into, you know, once we was Crips and we heard how it was like Crip on Crips crimes and stuff, man. We was like, wow, man. You know, that really used to freak us out, though, because we never really, you know, we never participated in Crip on Crip beef. You know what I'm saying? Like, when you get in the South, it's more like unification. Sets that you see in L.A. that don't fuck around with each other, in the South, they can't. What are some of, the, some of the gangs that you guys are surrounded by in Mississippi? Um, like I say, most of the Midwest gangs, you know what I'm saying? You got your, you had your GDs, you had your Vice Lords, and then you had different branches of Vice Lords, but you had the, the I's, the double I's, triple I's, the CVL's, and we had the um, Blackstones, um, Mickey Coverstones, Four Corner Hustlers, um, uh, Man, basically, man. And you know what? But one thing funny about it, it was no bloods there, though. Oh, really? Yeah. There's no blood in there? Where you, you said in your area? Not in my area. Well, you talking about right back in Mississippi when I was raised up right Yeah. That's what you talking about? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah it, it was no bloods there. It, it oh, was no wow, bloods okay. there. We, and, we, and we had the frame of mind. We weren't going to allow you to come there. We had a few attempts where some tried to set up shop, but it didn't work out. Really? Ah, interesting. Okay, okay. Why do you think it didn't work out? Oh, man, because really, like like I said, we was aggressive. Like, you know, like, as a youngster say, you know, today, man, we was with the shit. You know what I'm saying? We just went, this territory, it wasn't enough room for both of us to be here. We already deal with the others, you know what I'm saying? That was already established there, but we weren't even going for it, man. That was the mentality that we was on back then. Crip crazy, man. Did you have any bad encounters with the with the Mississippi sheriff? We had our run in. They knew us well, you know. They knew us well too, you know. But um, yeah. yeah. Most of the time, you got them. You always had some of them, you know, them prejudiced redneck cops that kind of like set up for you, like they always got it out for you. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You always have a few of those. You always have a few of those. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? You had some cops that was cool, that looked out for us. You know what I'm saying? They tried to tell us, hey, man, y'all need to probably get off this corner, man. You know, try to always talk, you know, 
good t- positive talk to us. It, it was one or two, you know what I'm saying? That was cool, you know what I'm saying? All of them wasn't bad, though. But, you know, mm-hmm. majority of them, you see, that was crooked. Yeah. You about mm-hmm. right on that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I want to I wanna fast forward to something that just happened a little over a year ago. And I would love to know how Mississippi and, you know, Arkansas, because you, I think you were in Arkansas this time, or specifically how, how you took it. Uh, the death of Nipsey Hussle. We lost Nipsey Hussle last year. Rolling 60 Chris. Uh, he was killed by one of his own. In your opinion, how could something like that have been prevented? Man. I, I, man. I really can't, I really can't even say on that, man. But it, it was a blow, though. Because, you know, man, it was... You know, for when I found out what he actually, what he stood for, man, you know what I'm saying? Then, you know, I liked how he took, you know, made the name, made the brand, made the trip look good, you know? And, you know, reached out to his people. And I just hated to see that, man. You know, I don't want to see no man do bad, you know? And that was just a loss, man. And I really don't know the inside. And I heard that it was a homie, man, that makes it even worse. But, man, you know, hey, I really can't say on that. I mean... I just got to respect the rules with them, you know, let them handle that, you know. But it was a loss, though. It really was a loss. Yeah, definitely, definitely. What are your thoughts on, on Takashi 6 9 I really, I really don't know too much about that guy. I heard him, you know, <laughs> my son, you know, I got a teenage son, I, like and I hear him talk about him, man. I'm kind of like old school, man. You know what I'm saying? So you know I'll, explain I'll explain his, 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 the background. I'm not sure if you know. And, and I like the fact that you don't really follow him. That makes this, your answer even a lot better. But he is a, a blood rapper uh, who affiliated himself with some New York blood. And he wasn't about that life, never was about that life. But they saw a little money maker, so they invited him into their gang. He got really, really close. He was screaming blood this, blood that. And long story short, a lot of crimes happened, and in the end, he snitched on everybody. Everybody got like 20 years, 15 years, 17 years. He got like 11 months. He just got out recently. Um, that is the story of Takashi 69, which you probably already knew, but I'm just giving it giving it to you again. Yeah, I heard about his affiliation and stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man, that's kind of like, wow, man. Best thing I can say, I just stay away from them type people, so I won't have to be put in no position like that. You know what I'm saying? I don't yeah. do no telling. You know what I'm saying? Hey, he did whatever he had to do, man. But <laughs> hey, I really don't got nothing to say on that one. <laughs> Talk to me about your your barber business. Now you're a barber, correct? Yeah, I'm known down here in Arkansas now as the Fade Doctor, man. You know what I'm saying? A new um, it's sort of like a a new identity of myself. You know what I'm saying? So, you know. But still, it gives me the opportunity to, you know, reach out and um, deal with yeah. the community, man. Build relationships, friends, mentor to younger kids that's out there in the street as well, you know. That's dope, man. And, and I'm and actually good. I'm sure this. Go ahead. And I'm actually good at what I do, man. I'm I'm cold with those clippers, man. That was one of my God-given talents. All even through my banging years, I always could cut hair. You know what I'm saying? Ever since I was 13, I used to cut hair. I used to cut, you know, cut hair out of my mom and dad's garage in Mississippi. And my grandma used to come through. She used to say, boy, God has blessed your hands. You need to go to school for that one day, Nate. But, you know, I heard they were going in one ear after the other. But, you know, I would rather run the street, gang bang, chase them girls, do all the wild stuff. And then it took years later down the road where I eventually heard my grandma's voice in my head after she had passed on and they like it activated and made me go you know go to barber college and pursue it that's dope that's dope and I always like to end my show with with some positivity and I have one more question for you man you know being that you you bang heavily for a, for a very long time you know you said you talk to kids out there and stuff like that if you could talk to a, a 13 year old right now has his foot in the street and he's like I'm about to join a gang I want to be a crip I want to bang crazy I want to do this I want to do that I'm curious what would you what would you tell him tell him to go the other way been there done that you know what I'm saying leave that alone man pursue an education 
find a trade. Do something you like to do. You know, man, you know what I'm saying? I lived and survived it. It ain't guaranteed that you will. I wouldn't want you to go through with some of the things I went through and seen. So it ain't no life in that, homie. It's a better way. That's what I would say. And I have been approached. I mean, I have been in a situation where I had to tell youngsters like that. Hmm. Even my own son. Yeah. Wow. Really? Yeah. Uh, okay. Your son was uh, was thinking of joining the gang, or he did? Yeah, this is my oldest son. Yeah, he was. Okay. He was fascinated. He was fascinated with that lifestyle too. So you know. I just had to talk to him and just, you know, just be straight up with him. You know, man, I've been there, done that. Ain't even no future in that. Damn. Damn. Yeah, I hope that situation turns out good, man. I hope you stay healthy during this crazy, crazy time we're going through in the world. Uh, get, go ahead and promote your, your barber business just in case there's anybody in Little Rock wants to get a fade. Yeah, hey, check this out, y'all. This your boy, Fade Doc. And my slogan is cutting is a habit. I'm cold with them clippers. Been nice with them since I'm 13. I'm 46. I'm an OG at this clipper and razor game. If you ever need a fresh cut, come holler at your boy, Nate Fade, Dr. Williams. And um, personal enhancements, Barbara and Beauty in Jacksonville, Arkansas. That's on North Street, North First Street, Jacksonville, Arkansas. And um, if you need to reach me, my number five zero one three five two eight eight six one. 501-352-8861. I aim to please. I love that, man. My man had it all down. That was the best promo I've ever heard. You have a great radio voice, man. It's been a pleasure, Nate. Thank uh, you so much for coming on the show. And I look forward to staying with you, man. Man, thank you for having me.